You are listening to The Reference Desk, the Wicomico Library's podcast that connects you to your public library. Welcome to The Reference Desk, the Wicomico County Library's podcast that keeps you connected with your local library. I'm Vicki. And I'm Amy. And we are here today to talk about exercise, getting moving, that really important thing that everyone tells us to do, but we always have to struggle to find time. This month, in preparation for STEM Fest, we will be discussing fun and different ways to stay active at home and maybe even at work. It's no secret that keeping your body moving and fit is an important part of maintaining a healthy mind and body. In this crazy busy time, it can seem really hard to carve out the time to exercise. Your daily routine may involve getting up, getting the kids dressed, ready for school, heading to work, getting home from work, jumping right into meal prep to feed the hungry horde at your house. Uh, check out last month's podcast to hear some tips and tricks on making the hungry horde happier for less time and money. Then, cleaning up, completing any little task you need to keep the household from collapsing upon itself, put the kids to bed, then, if you're lucky, get a shower before falling asleep, only to turn around and do this all over again tomorrow. You may ask, where are you going to find exercise? Even if this particular scenario isn't a reflection of your daily schedule, adulting is insane, so we're hoping that you can relate with the crazy, whatever form it takes. If you can carve 15 to 20 minutes, 15 to 20 Um, out of your minutes out of your day where you're not actively engaged in some activity, we have a variety of exercises for you to try. If even that is too much of a stretch on some extra busy days, we'll also end this segment with a few exercises that can be done at a desk or standing at a counter without affecting the activity in which you're otherwise engaged. The first activity is a family activity. It's called the 20 minute boogie, at least that's what I call it. So what you can do is turn on some tunes and you can find a wide variety of music albums on our streaming service, Hoopla Digital, and just dance along. It doesn't have to be choreographed or even graceful. Just move. The fun thing about this is that it doesn't even have to be in an individual activity. Got kids? Bring them in the fun. Pets? They may protest, but I've taken my cat on a many a whirl around the living room and he still deigns to snuggle with me, so it can't be that bad. 20 minutes is the recommended time to maintain an elevated heart rate, according to pretty much any scientist out there who does exercise science um so you know it's a fun way to get the cardio going variations on this and it's not as much fun i'll admit is to jam out to some music while scrubbing the floors or cleaning the windows your heart rate might not get as high as it would with dancing but you're moving and that's what counts yeah over the past year or so i've really gotten into yoga um so i use a lot of the free internet videos on youtube my favorite being yoga with adrian no plug not sponsored um and a really inexpensive yoga mat that i bought when tuesday morning was still at the mall so it doesn't have to be expensive you can just use a towel on your carpet or floor and i like it because when i do yoga i i build i'm building flexibility and strength at the same time kind of focusing on my breathing and sort of my headspace. So I'm kind of meditating in in a loosely form. But uh, it's nice that there are really quick videos and much longer videos. So as you advance and build up your um, your strength and your ability, you can do those really kind of like schedule those really long yoga sessions on the weekend, right? Or for an early morning or at right before bed, you can do maybe a 15 to 30 minute. I usually go for around 20, 25 Mm -hmm. minutes. And then you can get some exercise in, some personal me time that's really healthy for your physical and your mental health. Oh yeah, me time is super important. And that crazy adulting lifestyle. Uh, Crazy adulting lifestyle, dude. So uh, the next uh, segment we're gonna do is body weight uh, floor workouts. These are all body weight resistant workouts that require no equipment whatsoever. um, And they're all sort of yoga adjacent, a little bit of Pilates, a little bit of yoga adjacent activities here. Um, And they're all little things that um, I do personally um, pretty much every night, uh, only because I have a little boy who is what I like to call a bedtime flight risk. Um, if he's left to his own devices and I leave him in the room, say it's bedtime, give him a kiss, let, you know, close the door, he's in and out every five minutes asking for something trivial, complaining about a uh, bad dream, and you don't see my quotation marks, but they're there. I'm like, boy, you actually have to go to sleep to have a dream, but whatever. Or something that's super important, he just has to tell us right now. If you know this, you know the struggle. So um, I use this time, as I stay in his room in the dark, because that's how they sleep, <laughs> to do floor exercises. And, um... I do a variety of them. I keep it different. I keep it interesting. Um, I've done enough like yoga classes and Pilates classes back in the day when I used to go to the gym when I had time to do that. Uh, so I, I just you know absorb that into my routine. 
So I'm going to do my very best to explain this activity to you. Um, of course, this is something that if you want to look it up on YouTube and actually see someone do it and not in a verbal <laughs> description, if that works better for you, please feel free to go check that out. But I'm going to try my best. So these exercises are done while either laying on your back, on your side, or on all fours on the floor. Uh, the first example I'm going to do is a side leg lift. This is what I usually start with. Um, a side leg lift involves lying on your side, of course, with your arm on the floor that is, that's on the floor extended above your head. This is for stability because otherwise you will rock back and forth. Lift the leg that's on the top, um, depending on what side you're laying on, pointing the toes. Raise it about 16 to 20 times at whatever angle is comfortable for you. Some people can lift it all the way perpendicular to the hips. I am not that flexible. So, you know, as far as you're comfortable. And you want to do this in a controlled and steady rhythm. Don't do it too fast or else the in inertia of your leg, here's where science gets into it, the inertia of your leg will actually cheat and it won't be as effective for you. You want to do a controlled lift so you're actually engaging your obliques, which is the muscle that runs to the side of your stomach, um, on the side of your abdomen, so not your core, but like to the side. Um, and then uh, this activity also will work your oblique, your core, your obliques, your glutes, and your inner thigh muscles. Um, and you flip over and repeat that on the other side 16 to 20 times. And you can do that a couple, like twice if you want, but you know, as, many, as long as you really, until you start feeling the burn. <laughs> the next one um, I have, I don't really have a name for it, but uh, I'll try to describe it to you. <laughs> you might have a name for it. Um, when you're lying prone on your back, so legs out, head down on the floor, engage your core by tightening your stomach muscles. So this will help keep the strain off your back while you lift your feet about a foot off the floor, six inches to a foot. Hold this position for about 30 seconds or as long as you can, rest for a minute and then repeat as many times as you'd like. Usually between 15 to 20 times is a good length of time for repetition. Um, another ab exercise from this position involves bicycling your legs to your chest, so drawing your one knee up, and then as you lower the first knee, bring the other up, so you're kind of like you're doing a really high leg lift, but you're on your back. For added challenge, keep the leg that's down. Instead of having it hit the floor, keep it about six inches off the floor so you maintain that core engagement and that'll make the exercise much more efficient. One great thing to keep in mind when doing floor exercise is that you wanna make sure you give your back and abs a break occasionally. I try to do it about every five activities or so. So you do your 15 reps or five different repetitions of the activity. Um, and then you want to give your abs and your back a break because otherwise they can get tensed up and that's just not good for your, your, your posture. Um, and this can be done uh, easily by drawing both knees to your chest as much as you can. Um, <laughs> and um, still lying on the floor, of course, give their knees a big old hug. And you can also rock back and forth uh, while you're in this position to kind of massage and loosen up your hip abductors as well, which is the little ligaments that connect your hips and they can be really tight as well, especially when you're doing leg work. This also helps relax those. And these floor exercises that I was, I'm talking about, they focus on the abs and oblique and they're low impact, which makes them really good for you if you have bad knees, bad ankles, or something like that. Another good exercise when you're on all fours, so this is we're slipping over, I'm going on all fours, hands and knees, is leg lifts. So these are on your hands and knees legless versus the ones on your back, just clarifying. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you make sure your knees are directly below your hips and your hands are directly below your shoulders. It's very important to have a good stable base so you don't fall on your face. Ooh, I made a rhyme. So with your hands below your shoulders, alternate lifting and straightening each leg to point behind you. So if you have your, you're on your hands and knees, take one knee balancing on two hands on the other leg and you're gonna point your foot and stretch your leg so it's it's basically parallel or like an extension of your back. So you, you imagine your back being at like a tabletop, you wanna raise that leg so it's level with the tabletop. And I'm making a hand motion like you can see me, I don't know why. <laughs> Amy, you can see me, right? Yes. Yeah, good, Amy sees me. Um, <laughs> so when you repeat with the other leg and do that maybe 10 to 15 times, take a break um, and then you can do it a couple more times if you like. Uh, this is a really good way to exercise your glutes, which is another fancy word for your butt, by the way, your booty, gluteus maximus. And it's a good way to uh, tighten up those muscles as well. Um, 
as well as engaging your core and working on your balance and a little bit of arm strength because you are kind of doing you know you're holding your body up with your arms so you're pretty much working your entire body um a variation of this is uh you'll start with your leg lift where you put point your toe back and then on your way back down instead of stopping where your knee is underneath your hip again and going to the next leg you'll balance so that you are on your say say you're doing your right leg keep your right hand down pick up your left hand and draw your elbow in so that your knee hits your elbow as you come in and then you can do the leg lift with the same leg a couple times and get that motion. It's a little extra, it's a little bit more engaging your core, a little more flexibility and, and, balance. and balance as well. So it's a little bit more um, intense, but if you want to expand it, expand on it, you can definitely do that. Um, I do recommend finding a video for that if you really wanna do that particular one, because if you do it wrong, you can again fall on your face. And if you're trying to get the child to go to bed, it's not good to make a lot of noise by falling. So that's just my personal problem. Otherwise, it's just embarrassing in general to fall over. Um, sometimes it happens though, and it's part of life, we move on. So the next one I wanna talk about is planking. You've probably heard of planking. I think in the early aughts, there was a planking challenge where people would plank in the most bizarre of places. And that really just involves keeping your body straight and balancing actually in a normal way on the floor. We do not recommend planking in bizarre places. Let's stick to the floor exercises. Um, planking um, is a arm and ab workout. It also works your glutes and your obliques and everything else as well, but it mainly, mainly focuses on the arms and abs. Um, you're going to start by laying on your stomach, placing your hands beneath your shoulders, and you push up like you're going to do a push up. But uh, stay at the extended position, being careful not to overextend your elbows. Engage your core, which means tighten up your, make a conscious effort to tighten up your stomach muscles, and uh, hold this position for as long as you can. Try to aim for 30 seconds to start. It's gonna seem like a long 30 seconds, but you can do it, I know you can. You can also uh, stick with the old standbys, uh, sit-ups, crunches, push-ups, and squats. Those are just a few of the other great body weight resistance exercises that you can do in short segments of the day. When you're standing at a desk, you can always do like lift up on your toes and back on your heels to kind of work your calves. When you're sitting, you can be aware of your posture at the desk, tightening your core while you sit up straight can be a really great way to work your core as you're sitting there and it also improves and <laughs> we're all adjusting our posture now um here in the studio um but yeah you just you can uh, engage your core focus on your posture and that will work your shoulders it'll work your abs um and it'll even work your neck to an extent because if you are more conscious of it uh, those are some simple ways that you can do this even when you're at work if you absolutely can't carbonate your time out also, um, if you want to check out YouTube for different things, if you have a limited range of motion, strength, or your balance just isn't there, there are a lot of like chair exercises, yogas, pilates that have chair versions. Mm -hmm. So they're great if you don't feel comfortable trying something a little bit more leveled up um, and you can still get your daily motion in your strength and core but you're in a safer more stable um, sitting posture. I think even like places like the YMCA they even have uh, chair yoga they had a chair yoga class at least back in the day when I actually had time to go to the gym as we discussed I used to see like chair yoga and it was always at like obscene time in the morning I'm like what do you do you think everyone's up at four in the morning well they have it targeted towards elderly and they usually tend to get there earlier yeah. I think that's like the early bird kind of like the early bird special the early bird special yeah thing. two dollars for two eggs um but yeah if if you're interested in any of these uh, exercises or if the chair exercises, look online. YouTube is a fantastic resource uh, of, as, as far as video tutorials for different activities. And some of these you really just need that f visual aid because moving your body just from verbal instruction or even written instruction can be a little tricky. And when it's something that's involving your muscles and your body structure, if you do it wrong, you're not necessarily gonna hurt yourself, but you can hurt yourself. And we do encourage you to be safe about it. Um, you can also go on to Hoopla Digital, which is our online resource. And of course, we're gonna plug our online resources for the library, that is sponsored. <laughs> um, Hoopla Digital, if you look up, I just looked up exercise in general. You can look up something more particular like cardio, yoga, um, or whatever, and you can filter your choices down, but there's plenty of video. But we're actually gonna include the links at the bottom of the podcast. So you can go ahead and click and check any of those out. There's a lot of yoga. 
Um, there's one that's a beginning yoga. Yeah, just like you would normally check out uh, and you exercise can still do videos through the library, we also have a digital. So it's more of instead of, you know, coming down to the library, if you're in the mood to exercise at 5 o'clock in the morning or at 8 o'clock at night, you can instantly check these out through our digital services watch the video at home. So you're not limited to just coming down to the library okay. and checking out those exercise videos. And they do still have a decent selection of DVDs um, in the library system that you can mm -hmm. check out if you want to wait a few days for it to get shipped to whichever branch is convenient for you. That's absolutely your choice. We're just giving you the digital options because that's immediate gratification. And we like that. No more excuses. You can start that workout whenever. <laughs> whenever the little uh, gumption hits you, you can just, just do it. No more waiting for Monday morning <laughs> on, on a certain new month, like January. Uh, yeah. So for the ultimate free and simple workout, you just can't beat a walk outside. On my lunch break, I always try to get my daily walk in. Being outside always distresses me. Except when it's raining. I know. And then I have to walk in the mall. But I like the fact that I can get my steps in and burn a few extra calories. Now, I, I can say this because I work at the Center Branch, which is in the mall. But if you walking outside is weather dependent, especially when it gets extra cold or rainy, I'm not that much of a hardcore daily walker. Well, my solution is to walk inside the mall and you still see a lot of people doing that. So if you want to come out early or come out on your lunch break or even after work, you can get a few laps in, you can visit us at the center branch and even get some shopping done all, you know, in one place. So it is still a great option. You don't have to go shopping if you're watching your budget. I support that. But visiting the library and walking around the mall is still free. Yeah, and they even have uh, mile markers uh, that will tell you how far you've walked, so you have that sense of accomplishment. And that's really true. Walking is a great way to get moving. Um, if you live in an area where there are sidewalks or safe walking spaces, and I know not everyone has sidewalks because we don't have... Anything outside of city limits technically doesn't have sidewalks. Downtown Salisbury. Downtown yeah. Salisbury, it, or even if you want to go as far as Berlin, Snow Hill, Princess Anne, they have some decent little walking areas downtown. And we did an entire podcast on getting outside and walking trails and places you can go outside. So if you want to check out our history, we did have an entire podcast on that. But if you live in a rural area like me, where the road barely has a shoulder, sometimes it's a little intimidating. It's like the road to, in the ditch. And <laughs> to walk, especially early in the morning. Yeah, because it's, it's foggy like, like it was Today, this morning. We were yeah. in a lot of fog, and it can be a little dangerous. So be, of course, exercise caution. Um, if you are in an area where you're concerned, find something high-vis, a neon yellow shirt, or even get a reflective vest that you can wear when you're walking so that you are as visible as you can be because we do encourage safety when you're walking. But if you live in an area where there's sidewalks and safe places, you very likely have places within a few miles or a mile that you can you go to. Uh, usually if you're in downtown Salisbury, you know when I lived uh, in, I lived in the Newtown District, the Historic District, they're just north of it, about a mile from downtown, um, I used to whenever the weather was decent, and I'm talking like it wasn't raining, um, if it was cold or hot, I'd still go. Um, I would walk uh, the mile down the sidewalks, uh, cross 50 where there was a little crosswalk, and then, you know, go to the coffee shop downtown, get a cup of coffee, and then take the kids to the library, especially in the summertime when they were home. Um, and if the kids weren't home because they were in school or they were with their grandparents or whatever, um, I would take my bike. Um, I love riding my bike because by this, downtown's a fairly bike-friendly area. At one point, I think the coffee shop downtown gave me 10% off for biking, so I would get 10% off my coffee as well. Nothing which... like exercise with a purpose. If I'm getting yeah. rewarded at the end, oh, heck yes. Oh, yes, yes. Because <laughs> walking in a circle for me is kind of, I get bored. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm like, you know, if I want to take a walk around a lap, I'm like, I make two laps, and I'm like, oh, all right, I'm done. And it's never really enough. But if you're walking to, a, you know, the coffee shop a mile away, you're committed to two miles. You can't, like, welsh out unless you call somebody and say, hey, pick me up, which I've done. Um. <laughs> my, my way of continued walking yeah. um, to jump ahead is definitely audiobooks. I get them from Hoopla or Libby, and that keeps me from getting bored on my walk. That, oh, yeah. that is a big thing. Walking, unless you have a purpose or a destination like you're hiking, then just doing it in a circle. Audio the way to go. Right, yeah. And I mean, I would love to listen to audiobooks, uh, but if you've ever taken a walk with a small child with big thoughts, um, they will sit there and try to talk to you the entire time because they, they're bored. 
Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, while there always is the option of getting them a tablet and a pre-downloaded video for them to watch. That's dangerous. Don't don't walk. I used to read and walk. <laughs> well, they're when not I was walking. If they're in oh. a stroller. <laughs> although otherwise they're just running into flagpoles. You know. Put down your phone while you're walking. Yes. It's another safety. Yeah. Phone message. in the pocket. Earbuds in the ear. It's fine. Uh, or with your headphones, whatever. Um, the other day I was actually uh, weed whacking and I listened to uh, an audio. It was actually a YouTube video of a guy reading the Silmarillion. So I listened to that for like an hour and a half while I weed whacked. It was great. And then I left my phone in the sun and it overheated me. I find that when I am exercising, that's why I prefer like, I, I prefer low key exercises. I'm very low impact. But walking is my favorite because I can multitask, because I can listen to those books that I've been meaning to, to read and I can do a podcast, get some get some knowledge while I'm exercising my exactly. body. And it does make the time go so much faster. Yes, you don't realize how long you've been wee whacking and then the next day you can't feel your arm. And that was a, that was just a single experience. Um, you can overdo it. Though gar- that's another thing we talk about all the time, like yard work, gardening, cleaning, those do count. Go hardcore, go excited, you know, to go like the dirt, like a whirlwind and um, you will burn some calories and get things off your to-do list. Yes, which is constantly expanding. Yeah, the, the last week and I, I scrubbed bathrooms real detailed because I needed it and I just started blaring... Uh, the Dune soundtrack dropped on Spotify and we do the Spotify uh, family plan. It's the subscription we have and uh, I just started blaring it and my husband gets home and he's like do you have it loud enough and of course he's <laughs> screaming at me because it's I'm like I have to be able to hear it the entire house yes, yes. music for yeah. for cleaning does yeah help too. yeah music's great so yeah I mean we whacking I did the uh, the audiobook but the when you're cleaning you want music you want to be revved up you want to be revved excited excited yeah um and then you know but that also happens. counts on your it, I got exercise today. yes it does my legs told me the next day that I did plenty of squats <laughs> <laughs> because it was, it was rough um but yeah if you want to go for a walk there's also like the zoo downtown if you have little people and you want to take them to the zoo they can learn something you can get a walk in um even if you park at the zoo and just take a walk around the zoo there's um, that track in the in the one park yeah they have if you start out by um the bridge, white bridge by the gazebo you can take a path that goes all the way down to picnic island across Picnic Island down to Ben's Red Swings. You can go through the zoo and you can leave the zoo, go around the river. There's a little crossing on the bridge that's a footpath and you can walk around the other side of the zoo and you end up uh, back up by the other side of the bridge and you can come across. And I think it's like, I want to say it's two to three miles. It's not a small walk. Um, If you have a stroller, you can do that. It is a little bumpy in places, but I've driven my bike down there. It's not too bad. But yeah, you can do that. That's a really great way to get a little bit of uh, exercise and the kids can see the animals. And a lot of times it's shaded, so it's in the summertime not so bad. Mm -hmm. Um, You can always bring a picnic lunch or a snack because I am food motivated. You have a snack or coffee at the end of that ride and I will go. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> and um, and you don't forget to stay hydrated if it's if it's but even if it's cold outside, don't forget to bring some water with you, um, because staying hydrated is key. Uh, you don't want to get ill from dehydration because you're exercising. We again are exercising caution as well. So ah, I see the video. Yeah, yeah, I was laughing. Thanks. <laughs> So exercise will strengthen your body and your mind. Um, Making time to move just 20 minutes a day has been proven to improve brain function, mood, and overall health, and mental health as well. Thanks for joining us in this discussion, and we hope you can apply some of these exercises to your daily routine. Keep a lookout for our STEM Festival videos provided by the Wacomico County Library on YouTube. And there's going to be links, of course, down below for the uh, Hoopla digital titles that we recommend for yoga. Mm -hmm. We can also... uh, recommend going to the Wakanda County Consortium for our regular DVDs uh, as well that pertain to yoga, Pilates, or any kind of chair activities that you might be interested in looking at. Maryland STEM Festival that's going on in the fall, we have two Beanstack programs. So we will have, it's a fitness at home Beanstack that'll be starting next week. So you can definitely log on to that and try those. Those are building simple exercise equipment at home so you can do a lot of the body weight and mm-hmm. strengthening exercises that you would normally go to the gym for. Right. And that's why I did body resistance mm-hmm. today because I want to make sure that Mr. Brian, who's doing his videos on this, can tell you brand new exercises to do. 
Yep. And we will also be doing our food nutrition literacy program in November. So definitely sign up for that. You can just log on to our Beanstack site. It's available in the link to the main page. I'll also have a link in the um, YouTube page. But you just click on that and then you can register and we'll be ready for, you know, a nice, healthy fall. Yeah. And part one thing we're doing with our bean stack this time around for our nutrition one is we're actually going to give you an option to give us some feedback. If you have a recipe that you really like, that's a tried and true healthy recipe that's maybe passed down from your family or something you found that you've made your own, we do encourage uh, anyone who uh, participates in the bean stack program to put their recipe on our form. It's just a little Google form intake. And at the end, everyone who participates will also have your email. We're going to send you a uh, basically a little file that's going to have all the different recipes that everyone has contributed. Kind of like they do in elementary school when all the kids give yeah. the recipe. Like this little mini cookbook. Yeah, so mini Churches cookbook. used to do them yeah, locally too. The music ones when like the elementary kids do it and like they tell you how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. It's nothing like how you actually make a grilled cheese sandwich, but the teacher writes it down verbatim. It's absolutely hysterical. In fact, one of the videos we're doing for our food literacy is something I call magic cookies. And they're peanut butter, sugar, and egg. That's all it is. They're magic cookies because there's no flour. Um, that was in the recipe book that I got when I was in kindergarten. My teacher did that one, so it was an actual legit recipe. So not not 100% healthy, so we have some good stuff and some healthy stuff. But magic. There's no flour, so they're gluten-free. Magic. <laughs> and lots of protein from all that peanut butter. Oh, yeah, butter. peanut butter and eggs. So, like, it's a lot of protein and no no gluten, so they're kind of nice. And I love the fact that they're, they're just three so, ingredients. So easy. Something so, that most people would have in there. Most yeah. people have it in their, yeah. their cabinets at some point. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, we got a little off topic on our outro there. Sorry. Uh, but, yeah, please feel free to visit us on our website. Uh, check out our podcast page. And you can actually look through previous podcasts as well because they're all there archived. And then we do look forward to seeing you at the library sometime soon and maybe hearing from your favorite recipes for our uh, bean stack program. Until next time, bye, guys. Bye. Future episodes may feature a variety of topics, ranging from storytelling, arts and crafts, readers' advisory, reference questions, discussion, and more. We also encourage feedback through our Facebook page or in the comment section on the podcast. Visit us online at www.wicomicolibraries.org. Search for Wicomico Libraries on your favorite podcasting site. You can call us at 410-546-5397 or you can email us at center at wicomico.org. That is C-E-N-T-R-E at wicomico.org.